Well, for this episode of Mr. Nelson's Wednesday Comics, I'm doing all Marvel titles. Uh, and, I, well, I mean, I do some Marvel titles in, from the past. You know, I, every now and then I'll get back to uh, talking about the history of the Green Goblin and all that. Uh, but uh, in current era runs of uh, superhero comics, there just isn't a whole lot coming out of Marvel these days. Uh, one notable exception is Moon Knight. Uh, but now there's a new contender has stepped up to the plate, uh, that being the Incredible Hulk. And uh, hadn't paid much attention to the Hulk, but uh, got some reviews of him and decided to check out the, this new, well, <laughs> another rebooted series, but <laughs> uh, the Incredible Hulk uh, 1 through 3 of its current run and uh, uh, read through them. And uh, it's very simple and that's key to it. There's a lot simple about Hulk, but also a very lot, uh, a great deal of complex. Of course, the whole uh, dual uh, identity with Bruce Banner there and that, that struggle, which was the strength of it, even when uh, they would seemingly solve the problem in earlier uh, iterations of the character uh, and ultimately, of course, it fails, and that sort of thing all adds to the tragedy uh, of the Incredible Hulk story. And, uh, well, that's right back where he is now. Uh, this does refer to previous stories that I don't know much about. There's this element of a green door that <laughs> the Hulk uh, either closed or opened, now I'm forgetting which is which. Don't really care too much. I mean, that is pretty significant to the plot going forward here. But the overall approach here is uh, horror. And uh, for uh, the Hulk would fit right into that because it is, uh, granted, it's more tragedy than horror. But at the same time, uh, the Hulk himself is, is a monster and he uh, has to deal with other monsters. And in this case, there's some uh, weird old dead god who's come back. <laughs> and there's zombies and uh, some weird uh, ancient cult uh, that feels that Hulk is part of a prophecy and whatnot. And it's all very uh, creepy. And it has certain uh, Bernie Ryston style to the artwork here. And uh, it's also uh, a return to form, uh, especially with Banner being on the run. Uh, he's once again pretty much lost everything, and he's in this conflict with the Hulk, and the battle ultimately is that only one of the personalities will survive, and the Hulk is determined it'll be him. You know? <laughs> uh, and now there's this added uh, new sidekick of this uh, uh, young girl, who had an abusive father and all this sort of thing. And uh, she looks up to the Hulk because she's she wants strength and power so that she can't be hurt anymore and that sort of thing. And uh, But it uh, calls back to uh, Rick Jones being the constant companion of Bruce Banner and the Hulk in the early stories. And so this girl, uh, Charlene, uh, has... Uh, pretty much uh, taken that, that spot uh, for this version of the Hulk on the run from the authorities and these creepy cult monster worshippers <laughs> who are monsters themselves. I, you know, it's uh, rather bizarre. They disguise themselves as human beings, but they aren't and that sort of thing. But it's all, uh, all the horror elements and creepiness of that uh, genre is all uh, present here and it's it's so far it's only three issues but it seems to be well done the only drag is that it's dependent on previous stories which may not have been all that bad i don't know uh, if i continue liking this i'll have to check back on, on previous issues uh, that the story is referring to but just in the uh, opening salvo of it i it, you know it's backstory for this and uh, for the most part i don't feel too left out on it uh, just uh, enjoying it for what it is in this strange horror story. And ultimately, the deal with the Hulk, he comes across very monstrous and threatening, but mostly, you know, to Bruce Banner himself. Uh, in the end, even when he's he's upset with the girl, he doesn't want her around, but he, he saves her from the monsters, uh, you know, because ultimately, uh, you know, Hulk has the heart of a heroic figure and all that. So, uh, 
so far so good. Uh, and, and no woke crap in it. <laughs> it's just a basic story. And uh, that's the key element uh, for this to uh, possibly enjoy some amount of success, at least creatively anyway. I don't know how much of a readership Marvel Comics has left, but uh, this is one to uh, check out and might have a chance here. The other title, of course, continues to be Moon Knight. It's the only one that was any good. Uh, it's not great. Uh, it's got some slow issues here and there. This one, uh, where they concentrate entirely on uh, Hunter Moon, the other Moon Knight, and uh, he has to take therapy as well. <laughs> <laughs> but in the telling of the story, uh, he's kind of feeling like he's lost himself uh, and this ability that Kanchu was able to resurrect them when they die. Now that Kanchu apparently is being held prisoner in Asgard, uh, if they die now, they cannot come back. But in the course of him relating uh, this battle that he was in to the therapist, uh, he reveals that he can channel previous uh, avatars of Kanchu or fists of Kanchu, if you will, uh, the different people who had uh, Kanchu's blessing and uh, protection and whatnot. And he's able to channel uh, these people in, in the battle, but it makes him a more brutal uh, a fighter, and he nearly kills this uh, opponent or villain that he's in a fight with, and that sort of thing. And he's all very troubled by it because he doesn't recognize him on his own self. So uh, this sort of begs the question, uh, was Mark Spector, uh, as I understood it, uh, now granted in the original version of Moon Knight, he did not have a multiple personality disorder. He created al aliases, and that was it. But later on, to differentiate him more from Batman, <laughs> uh, they added in that, that no, these were separate personalities uh, within his psyche. Uh, but in the case of Hunter Moon, he didn't really see that. But now, due to the fact that he is a fist of Kanchu, he has these uh, past, uh, well, the, the spirits, I guess, of, of past uh, fists of Kanchu. And so that kind of puts him in the same position. And so I, I, you know, chicken or the egg, how did this, <laughs> is that a, a rewrite of Moon Knight overall? Uh, I don't know, but that's basically uh, a, a character study for Hunter Moon uh, in this uh, issue. And then, uh, you know, and then that's what it reveals and leaves it somewhat open there, I guess. And then uh, it's on back to uh, Mark Spector in the next issue. So, uh, there's supposed to be a separate Moon Knight title uh, coming out. I, I don't know if it's just a miniseries or whatnot, uh, but I don't know. Maybe it, they would expand on this, uh, and it, it, it does deserve, you know, uh, some amount of readership if you absolutely have to have a superhero comic <laughs> from the mainstream publishers, and uh, this is one of them. Uh, it's not on par with World's Finest over at DC, which, of course, remains uh, the best. But as far as Marvel goes, it still holds the title. Now with Hulk coming in, but Hulk has its different angle where it holds uh, more to the uh, now, at least in this current version, to monster horror story and, uh, rather than superhero story. So anyway, uh, but uh, Hulk could easily take uh, Moon Knight's title. And this, which is, you know, Moon Knight has a lot of horror elements to it as well, um, because of the weird situation uh, that the character's in. So finally, the only other uh, title, which is only a miniseries that I'm interested in from Marvel, was Ultimate Invasion. Uh, well, three issues in, and it has really slowed down. Um, this was just a whole issue of conversations, <laughs> great art, but not a whole lot happening. And then I suppose some reveal at the end, but wasn't all that ultimate to me. <laughs> and, uh, I don't, I, I can't remember how long this thing is. Is it six issues or five? I mean, I, I, mm. Uh, unless it's 12 i don't i don't think see how you can justify this i know hickman's a good writer i've seen him do 
a great work, and he's easily now the best writer they have available to Marvel. Um, and there's this other series, Gods, but I don't know if I'm even going to bother. Uh, this looks like it's seemingly possibly not going anywhere. And I and I, I don't know if this is like, oh, the maker just changed time to recreate a, a version of the Ultimate Universe in the current one, and then, no, oh, it'll all fall apart. And it'll just be back to the normal universe, and no one will ever know that he did it. <laughs> Since maybe he'll cease to exist. I, that would be rather stupid. Because um, I think they'd be better off just saying the Ultimate Universe still exists, and uh, Miles Morales can be his own Spider Man there, and that sort of thing. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, uh, of course, you know, Brian Hitch's art looks great. But that's about all I can say for it at the moment. Because uh, there wasn't, there just wasn't anything intriguing here. It was just more of the same of Howard Stark wondering, what the hell is this all about? And obviously he's plotting to take down the Maker, uh, it appears. But, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, uh, wasn't blown away. The next fourth issue could change all of that. And uh, this... I might justify this one, but I think uh, with two and three, uh, it, it's too slow. And uh, a lot of space taken up with these maps and stuff in there. Uh, that's enough of that. Um, if you don't have the material, you don't have the material. Maybe you should have just done one special one shot <laughs> book or uh, a graphic novel and leave it at that, you know? Yeah. Uh, so a bit of a letdown as, as at the moment, but uh, that could easily change uh, in another issue. So uh, there you go. Uh, Hulk looks like uh, uh, a promising title. Moon Knight is basically uh, steady. And uh, I, I'm afraid Ultimate Invasion appears uh, to be faltering. Uh, but hopefully I'm uh, very wrong about that. But, uh, well, we'll see.